Alrighty guys, XCON here, and welcome to the one year anniversary special of the XCON's Star Wars show. This is episode 23. This is going to be a big one, lots to talk about. That's the reason why, because there's lots to talk about. Um, so yeah, hi. Yeah. Really, nothing crazy about one year doing a show, you know, I didn't do it weekly, um, but yeah, hi, you know, obviously, I love Star Wars, and you know, that's why I do the show, and, you know, so I can talk about Star Wars on a weekly basis, rather than just whenever the hell I want to do a review of it. Which I can't always do super frequently. So yeah, I I love Star Wars, you know. It's that's my favorite thing in the world. You know? And I just really, really like it. You know. Which, uh moving on from that little very short chat about how I love Star Wars. Um, I might talk about them more later at the end. But we have some stuff to get to. Um, starting off, let's have new releases real quick. I am doing a digital code giveaway of Star Wars Last Jedi, um, which was supposed to end today, but I have now extended it till Friday. It will end at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and to enter, all you have to do is go to the unboxing video and follow the rules, which I'll mention them real quick, which is subscribe, maybe comment below in that video, and to get a second entry is follow me on Twitter, and I, I believe I said DM, but I, I don't fucking, you know, I don't even know if I have them open or not. Uh, because, uh, you know, to be honest, I couldn't figure out how to, so I just said, fuck it. All you need to do is just follow me. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, which, you know, one thing about Twitter, people who follow me, uh, for some reason, uh, the guy who did that one TV show where he drives around in the, um, over in a uh, taxi cab, um, it took me way too long to, uh, figure out the name taxi cab, uh, called Cash Cab, the host of that, Ben Bailey, follows me on Twitter, <laughs> just the weirdest fucking thing to me, but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that real quick, even though that's nothing to do with whatever the video is about. But yeah, anyways, now moving on to the new releases of the week. There's two new comics coming out. Those are Darth Vader, Dark Lord of Sith, Issue 14, Burning Seas Part 2, which comes out April 11th, so Wednesday, and Thrawn Part 3, which also comes out April 11th. So yeah, that's it for new releases. Um... There's actually some stuff I'm really excited for next week. Um, I'll see a new book and a new comic I'm pretty excited for. Um, so yeah, anyways, moving on to news. The trailer for Solo, a Star Wars story, has been released. In a, it's alright trailer. Obviously, it really doesn't have any, like, whoa, whoa, shit, dude, you know, stuff. But, you know, it just really shows that hopefully it'll be a fun, like, you know, action, like, western heist movie. But, uh, yeah. But they also have released what I'm guessing is the theatrical poster. Um, so yeah, I'll have that up on the screen now. I'm now going to be talking about you know what it looks like. Um, 
Also, yeah, as you can see, it kind of uses the style of the teaser posters. And, you know, at the bottom it says, Solo Star Wars Story. It has this kind of orange-ish color to it. Um, anyways, right in the middle it has Han. Uh, and to the right of him is Chewie. Which, to be honest, Chewie looks a bit weird in the uh, poster. But to the right of Chewie is Beckett, who's played by Woody Harrelson. But if we go to the left of Han, we have Cora, who's played by Amelia Clark. Oh, and uh, Han Solo, real quick, is played by Alden Ehrenreich. And then, anyways, to the left of Cora is Lando, who's played by Donald Clover. And then we, to the left of him, is... Val, I believe is her name, played by Thaddee Newton. And on the left of her is the droid L337. I forget who voices her. Um, but yeah, and behind uh, them you can kind of see the falcon there. And then above them is the kind of, you know, like this orange stuff, which is a little, I'm guessing, it's supposed to look like you know, the cockpit window of the Falcon itself. And then we have some, I'm guessing, desert-looking planet. What well, looks like it has two suns, so, I don't know, maybe it is uh, Tatooine. But then again, that's, having two suns is not something that's very rare, uh, like, for instance, the last Jedi, the planet Octo, has two suns. So yeah, it's, it's a cool looking poster. And uh, it's nice at the uh, top for all their names. They use the uh, Serif Gothic font, which they use for in the uh, Force Awakens and Last Jedi logos for the areas where it says the Force Awakens and the Last Jedi. So I, I found that a neat. Uh, but yeah, um, also, earlier in the week, De Denny's uh, announced a partnership with Lucasfilms, or, you know, Denny's restaurant, to have some, you know, solo-themed food. So yeah, like pancakes, and they have, like, special little cups with some of the characters on it, and there's some, like, cards with some characters on it, and uh, revealing the name of the one character from the teaser, who was like part of that pirate gang, something like that, uh, you know, their name, which is Enfeed's Nest, which, uh, real that uh, is a she, uh, and she is the leader of the Cloud Riders. Um, and also, there's a card for the incredibly named and revealing name of the alien. Its name is Therm Scissor Punch. That's up there in like top 10 Star Wars names already. It's incredible. So yeah, um, there's some other news stuff, um, nothing I really, really care to talk about, uh, but yeah, anyways, moving on to the review, which this week I have a review, um, and that is going to be for the Star Wars The Last Jedi special features, uh, like the director and the Jedi making of documentary, the deleted scenes, and some other ones. Um, I did not get around to watching the director's commentary, uh, so you know, obviously, I won't be reviewing that here. I might next week, really depends. Uh, so, 
the director in the Jedi. It was a good documentary um, on the making of the Last Jedi. You know, it's very much you know, similar to the uh, making of documentaries for the Force Awakens and Rogue One. You know, it's it's about an hour and a half, I want to say. Um, obviously, it's been like it's been a year since I watched Rogue One documentary. It's been like two years since I watched Force Awakens one, so I don't remember exactly how those how it compares to those. Because obviously, I only watched them once, and I'm not. Probably should watch them again, but uh. So yeah, so if you like Star Wars and you know, the making of like movies and whatnot, you know, just documentaries about them, it should be right up your alley. Uh, you know, like I really like this stuff, so you know, obviously I liked it. And there's three other like smaller uh, making ofs for certain scenes. They don't go. They go a bit more in depth than the uh, full documentary, but it's not like, like super in depth. But uh, anyways, for the scenes, it's the space battle, the throne room, and the battle of Krait, which uh, like the same thing like the doc. I recommend if you like that kind of stuff. And then there was uh, one about Ryan Johnson, a couple others. Talking about, well, I believe the, the special is called the balance of the force. Uh, but, you know, they're talking about, of course, it's mainly Ryan Johnson. Uh, talking about and how not to make make it, you know, some crazy superpower. You know, actually make it something that's meaningful. So, yeah, I really like that one. And it really... Shows to some Last Jedi haters who say that Ryan Johnson had has no idea what the Force is. You know, really show me that he he did truly understand what the Force is. Ah. So yeah, you know, if you like that stuff, then you shouldn't like it. Uh, and then there was one other where it was uh, I believe it was called. Andy Circus Live one night only. But uh it just was some of Snoke's scenes from the movie. But uh just taking out the CGI of Snoke and just having Andy Circus in his performance capture suit. Um you know, showing his how he actually acted scenes. So yeah, I, I found that one interesting. It's not, it's not the best uh, special feature in the uh, Blu-ray. But anyways, moving on to the deleted scenes, which there is a total of technically 14, but one of them is just like B-roll what they just didn't use in the movie. So, you know, it's really not deleted because, you know, it's just... It's, B-roll, they film that stuff with the intent of most of it not being in the movie. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, I'll go over a couple. Um, eventually, like, um, halfway through, I just threw in, like, four of them, because I kind of had the same thoughts on them. Uh, but yeah, anyways, the alternative opening, it was... A neat way to open the film, but, you know, the actual way they open the film is a lot better. Oh, and I should also say, I'll be saying if I, yes, no, or maybe, if it should have been in the movie or not. And like this alternative opening, no, I don't think it should have been in the movie. Paige's gun, gun jams. It's really nothing special. They get deleted because of Ryan Johnson when they introduced the bombers later. That is the main reason why. And, you know, it really wasn't anything. The importance of 
character of Paige was, you know, it's a lot better in the actual movie. Um, so yeah, that's a no for this. Uh, Luke has a moment. It shows, uh, this is a very quick scene, but it shows, uh, Luke grieving over the death of Han Solo. It's a nice little scene, but, you know, because it they also have director's commentary for all the uh, delayed scenes, and I watch them normal, and then I watch them again with the doc uh, director's commentary. So, you know, made sense why, you know, they uh, deleted it. So, you know, this one I'm kind of, like, maybe, like, understand why it was deleted. I completely under, you know, think it's... Uh, perfect reasoning, but then again, it's, it's a good scene, um, Poe, not much of a sewer, it's a nice little scene with Poe giving Finn his jacket back, um, after, you know, Poe sewed it up, didn't show that in the movie, that's not, wasn't in the deleted scene, but, uh, yeah, but he sewed it up for him, and, you know, give it back, give it to Finn. You know, I like I like the scene. Um, I believe it was cousin in the lead scene. Like the scene it's right after it shows a little bit. It's the scene where Leia slaps Poe. So I forget the main reason why they deleted it, but it was a nice scene. I liked it. Another one. Maybe it could have been, you know, you know, let's show still on there. Uh, then uh, it's kind of weird that you recorded that. BB-8 shows Finn what Ray told him when he was unconscious at the end of The Force Awakens. It's all right, but you know, the purpose of, you know, was the uh, show why Finn wanted to leave, but they already, you know, made, you know, the actual movie make sense why, you know, without this scene. So this scene isn't needed. Uh, the caretaker sizes up Ray. It's a bit of an extended scene. Some of the scenes still in the movie, but, you know, it's not like caretakers not liking Ray, which wasn't really needed. They already showed enough of it in the movie. So that's a no for this one. The Caretaker Village sequence, which was probably like the big one people were talking about. Um, and it's probably the biggest deleted scene um, other than the extended scenes. Uh, but anyways, Ray sees blue, it's, it's like fire or like or something at the caretaker's village and uh Rook, Rook, Luke tells her uh that they are Raiders, so you know the Oakland Raiders NFL team. And they're going there to play their match. Um because they think it's Las Vegas because that's where they're moving. <laughs> that's such a shitty joke. Uh so you know, and Luke tells her that there's no point in going to save them because the Raiders will just come back in full force next week. Then, you know, she goes to save them. It turns out to be just the caretakers out of party, dancing around. Then, uh, Ray talks to Luke and he reveals that he was just joking around. So, uh, you know, it was kind of show a bit more of why Ray is upset and doesn't like Luke too much. Which say in the actual movie it was already you know, kinda told already who didn't need the scene, so and it was it's quite lengthy, so you know they cut it out, so it was a no for uh that one. 
now here's a couple deleted scenes. This is where I kind of just got kind of starting to get a little bit bored of writing them, and these four aren't really that important. Let's see. Extended father chase. Rose bites the hand that taunts her. Rose and Finn go to where they belong, and Ray and Chewie in the Falcon. The extended father chase stretches out that chase a bit, like way too much. Rose bites the hand that taunts her. She bites Hux's finger. It's a weird. Eh, really isn't needed. And Rose and Finn go to where they belong, which is this. Um, like, in the shuttle, leaving the supremacy going to crate, which isn't really needed. And it's just Ray and Chewie in the uh, co cockpit of the Falcon on crate. So, you know, and it, it was like 10 seconds or something like that, which it really wasn't needed in the movie. So, for all those four, it's hard to know. To make a destroyer incursion... Extended version uh, extends the scene with Rose, Finn, and DJ on the supremacy, and it's okay. It's a bit tense at times, but it doesn't really add much. Yeah, gives us what I'm believing is Tom Hardy's uh, cameo. I don't remember if in the director commentary stuff if it said it was his or not. But, you know, kind of like he, he recognizes Finn. You know, it seems like he's going to then, like, call him a traitor, but then he doesn't realize that he is a traitor and then give him a good old slap on the ass. Um, so, you know, this one was our right. This could be either or. It really doesn't add much to the movie. just makes the scene a bit, a bit more... Tense, but you know, it didn't matter because no matter what, they're gonna get, they got caught anyways. So yeah, um, and Phasma squealed like a whoopog. It's a different version of the Finn Phasma fight. Uh, it's goes on for a bit too long. So I, I prefer the actual one, even though like Finn tells some of the other stormtroopers what Phasma did on Star Killer, and then you know she kills all the stormtroopers, and then Finn uses the mace thingy to, you know, have uh, Phasma's hand come off. So you know, been cool to have you know a character lose. A limb in a in this movie because you know it is the middle of the trilogy and because in Attack the Clones and uh, the Empire Strikes Back a character does lose their hand so you know but you know it's whatever so yeah this scene but I prefer the actual one so I'd say a no for this and then the costumes and creatures of Kanto Bite. Like I said, this is just some B-roll used in the film, so it's really not deleted. It's cool, but, you know, whatever. So, yeah, um, some upcoming content, uh, Star Wars Rebels reviews, they're coming out this week. They will this time, and I promise that. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, uh, that's going to be it for this episode, uh, the one-year anniversary special. Um, but yeah, I was talking about it earlier. I just, you know, I love Star Wars, and you know, nothing I like doing better than talking about Star Wars. And uh, I hope I, you know, And, uh, take this show to uh, better places, you know. Don't know exactly what I can do right now, but, you know, just 
better quality of the videos. But yeah, yeah. I don't know, I'm gonna end this one off here. Um, in the next one, I will, uh, or next week's episode, I'm talking about the new releases, where there's a new book, a new comic. I think a couple of other things. I have to check, you know, the release dates. Um, but yeah, and, uh, maybe there'll be some news, some decent news. Maybe I'm really hoping that we get the like new animated series news like soon. I I don't expect any like movie news anytime soon. Um. So yeah. But yeah. Anyways, I've been next on, and I will see you guys in the uh, next one. Core is shutting down.